Welcome back to It Resolves, everybody. Today we are uh, jumping into something a little bit different. We're going to do a chromatic cube draft on Arena. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. It's going to be vastly different than what we're used to, but let's jump in. All right, guys, so we are jumping into the chromatic cube draft. I don't know a ton about this format, guys, I'll be honest, but I do know that the goal is to kind of go into a lot of different colors or at least attempt to go into a lot of different colors. So uh, we do want to get a lot of uh, activation opportunity off of this. Um, this is interesting. I kind of like the key to the archive. Add two man of any combination. Uh, we can get plenty of powerhouse stuff later is my assumption. So I think we're going to end up going this route. We're just taking a quick look through. Nicol Bolas is obviously huge and powerful. Uh, and we'll talk about also my draft experience as we go through this, guys. So one thing I would like to point out is that uh, while I have drafted plenty of times before, it is not necessarily a strong suit of mine. And so as we're going through, you'll probably notice that I take picks or do things that probably aren't the best. Uh, and that's okay. That's pretty much to be expected, uh, but I am going to do the best I can uh, to make sure that we're, you know, doing the right stuff. I really like Llanowar Elf. As funny as this is, as like innocuous as a little 1-1 one -one Elf looks, uh, I feel like this is probably a good idea because it does help ramp us. It's a turn one play, uh, which is usually pretty low value, but in terms of mana generation, ramping in this format seems really, really good. Uh, now, again, I have only... I. I should preface all of this, I've only done one chromatic cube draft and it was truly just to see what the draft experience would be like. Uh, and so this is really uh, like 100% something completely new. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature in your library, draw a card. That's not bad, actually. Um, I do like this, add one mana of any color, that seems pretty good. Uh, if we can base ourselves in green and then like kind of ramp into some big stuff that obviously is focused in maybe other colors, I feel like that might be really good. Uh, but I don't know, to be honest. Again, this is a, a huge learning experience for me, so we're going to do the best we can and see what happens. Sky Cape Clave Relic doesn't seem terrible, uh, as does Gala Greeters, though. I actually really like the Gala Greeters. Whenever I land, I create a food truck. Ah, that might be the play. Yeah, let's go this route. Tireless Provisioner is very good. Um, I do really like Beanstalk Giant as well. It just gives you another opportunity to, to ramp, but then of course also get to a big creature later on. Uh, I think we're gonna keep that going. Normally in this format, from my understanding, now again, you guys correct me if I am wrong. If you have done this uh, format more than I have, which you probably have if you've done it at all, uh, let me know your thoughts because I, the assumption that I get is that you really wanna jump into as many colors as possible, uh, which is really awesome and really fun. I feel like basing in one color is just so much of what I'm used to in a draft environment that it's really hard for me to jump outside of that. Uh, now, that's just because of personal experience and that kind of thing, so that's not to say it's good or bad. That's just my my uh, own bias coming into play here, but uh, it is really interesting to kind of see how things play out and, and what happens here. Do I like Turgrid? I mean, I do, yeah. Uh, I also like Zeotora's Envoy. I kind of want to try that. Uh, Crackle with Power is a really funny finisher, but I don't know that it's really that good, if that makes sense. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try Turgrid. Not, not sold on that by any means. Um, that's not bad. Uh, Nashi is like, meh. I feel like not that great. Uh, Tiamat is really sick, but, <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of dragons, so I don't think that's, that's where we're going. I do actually really like Spell Swindle. Um, weirdly though, I think it might just be the land. If we're basing ourselves in green, having a thriving grove seems like relatively important because then we can just kind of throw this out and then choose another color, whatever it needs to be, and we can kind of fix ourselves. So between that, the key, uh, and the tireless provisioner and the menagerie curator, uh, which is a card I didn't even know existed. Just be honest, I don't play alchemy. Uh, like this should be interesting. Uh, also, the adventure side of Beanstalk Giant allows us to pull a basic land of whatever color. So, like, we're kind of setting ourselves up to be able to play whatever we, we pull. So, at this point, we're kind of looking for maybe a little bit more of that, but mostly just, like, really good ways to uh, end the game, which I think is kind of what this whole draft format's about, let's be honest. Um, 
It's got great to reach over this. I do really, I kind of want to try that. Uh, it's really silly, but guys, I mean, come on. <laughs> we have to do it. It's so dumb. Um, okay. It might just be Feed the Swarm, um, just to have some removal options. All of these are really interesting, but I, I think Feed the Swarm is probably the pick. Um, let's see. I don't know. I think we'll just take the land, expecting that we might end up needing it. You know what I mean? Um, I mean... This seems really good. Uh, the the land is obviously quite good too, but I think we're gonna go this route. Let's let's get some big stuff in here. Uh, that's a great land for us, honestly. It helps us get there. We'll take a Garrick, sure. Uh, we do need to pay careful attention to our curve here, just to make sure that we're not, you know, with a draft deck, it's pretty it, it's pretty important to get your uh, your your um, your curve right. Uh, now we have got Ren and Seven with. The Voracious Hydra looks very interesting. Gray Mer Merchant seems pretty bad. Pelucranos is cool, but I don't think it's better than those two. Um, I think it's probably just Voracious Hydra. We do a lot of ramping in this deck. Um, that seems okay, but not great in our deck. So yeah, I'm gonna go Voracious Hydra. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Hedron Archive is in there. And onto the battlefield. That seems fun, but not like. Um, Hedron I Archive is very reasonable. We also have Cold Steel Heart, which does fix mana, but we're actually not really hurting for that. Target player. Hmm. I'm just going to keep to our game plan of ramping into some big stuff here. Um, maybe this isn't correct, but I think what we're allowing ourselves to do is kind of ramp into a position where we can Turgrid on the Lantern side and just do a lot of it. <laughs> um, Vizier of the Menagerie is kind of sick because it does allow us to play from the top of the deck. Search your library, reveal it, and shuffle it. Eh. I'm at a Menagerie. I don't know that this is correct, to be honest. I don't know that it's that good, but I like it a lot. <laughs> um... I mean, Hydroid Crisis is a pretty bomb card in this format, I have to imagine, right? Yeah, let's go for it. We want big X spells. We've got so much ramp that it feels like kind of important for us to do that. We do need to kind of fill up our three drop slot a little bit here. And of course, you know, get some other big finishers because really we're not hitting the big finishers yet. We do have the Hydroid Crisis, which is probably gonna fit somewhere in here. Voracious Hydra, I suppose, is probably the same. Um, yeah, this is this is gonna be interesting. Uh, I really do think this can be a very fun format, so I'm I'm curious to see our uh, how this goes. It's on top of you. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't know that that's good. I feel like Timeless Witness might honestly just be a really solid card. I'm gonna take that. Um, it just seems reasonable enough to, to probably want to take. Shieldred is very good. That's definitely a bomb. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely take Shieldred. Uh, I do really like Overgrown Tomb. Um, it helps us out here. Godless Shrine, not that great. Uh, I mean, it's fine, but obviously I think the, the Overgrown Tomb is better. Maybe it's Liliana, though? Yeah, let's go Lily. Let's go for the cool stuff, guys. We're here to we're here to do broken stuff, not not easy stuff, right? Uh, I suppose we actually can play the Blightstep pathway now because we do have the Zeotora's Envoy. So there is a world where we want to play this, and at the worst, it's just a swamp, which we're gonna want to play anyway. Um, so that seems reasonable. Again, our curve really needs some work. Worth noting, this is gonna be a three drop essentially, uh, first and foremost. So the the curve looks more like this, uh, whereas these are really just kind of sitting somewhere up here. I'd have no clue where. Uh, return any number. I do like the recursion that we have in this deck. Like, that seems really good. Then seek a permanent card with me about you the lands you control. That's kind of sick. Um, let's see. I mean, this is really good, but I'm going to go for the Settle the Wilds. 
I think that that's probably just really good for us here to be able to have a basic of each color if we need it and, and kind of pull whatever we need to, if that makes sense. Uh, it also, of course, just gives us the ability to pull or to seek a permanent card, which, I mean, we've got quite a few that we're going to want to play. So, uh, again, doesn't seem like this would be great in our deck. I guess it's just Pelucranos. It's recursive, like on one, on, on, it's nice to have the recursive aspect of this, like the escape cost. Um, I guess it doesn't work super well with uh, Nethroid, but yeah, we'll see. Let me discard a card. Um, I guess it's a removal spell. So may as well conjure a duplicate of the sacrifice creature. Okay. I don't know. I again, this is such a new format to me, guys. Uh, I love drafting. I think drafting in general is just a blast. But I've not done this kind of draft in quite a while. A little bit of card draw is quite nice. Um, I suppose we'll take this. Don't know that we'll play it. Uh, to be honest, we've only got one card that actually uses white, so it doesn't seem super needed. Um, kind of want this. I just want to try it. I don't know that it's good, but I do want to try it. Um, pay one life, sack a creature. Uh, we'll take it. I don't actually think this is a Yawgmoth deck, though. I actually don't mind Vanishing Verse. We're going to have to do a lot of work with our deck, of course, here. Um, let's see. What do we want here? I mean, it might just be this. Kiora seems kind of good. Oh, okay. Well, we took Kiora. I didn't actually, I was, I thought I was just clicking it to like reserve it, <laughs> not take it, but I will be fine with that. I mean, it works really well in the deck, right? Like we've got a lot of things with a higher power than four uh, or four or greater. So we should be pretty reasonable there. Nyxbloom Ancient. Is this a Nyxbloom Ancient deck or an Oracle of Voldai? Both are very good. Um... Dang, these are both really good cards, in my opinion. Between this and Vizier, we could actually play really... Yeah, I'm going to go for the cool play. Uh, that just allows us to do so much. I don't think that's necessarily the right call, but we're going to do it. Um, what are we looking for? I think it's just fixing at this point, right? So I'll take this. We've got both on color uh, tap lands here, which is really good because we can obviously then just kind of fill out our, our mana as we go. Um, let's see, what do we like here? Not a lot. It might just be this. Again, we're gonna trim things down, guys. So fully expecting that this is not the final list that we're looking at right now uh, for obvious reasons. That seems fun. Let's do that. <laughs> I have no clue if that's good or not, but it looks really fun. Um, is there sorcery? No. It might just be Corvold. I wish we had like a token generator, but I do really like Corvold. I don't know that this is a Corvold deck, though. I guess we do have some token creation with Lily. Um... How do we feel about the deck? I'm not sold. I'll be honest, I'm really not sold on it, but I really do like it. Like it, there's there's parts of it that I like, but I'm just not so sure that it's good. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, I do like that we have a little bit of removal. When they do, so you conjure a duplicate. Okay. We've got like so much in this slot. Uh, that I don't know that's if it's good or not. I think we take Pelucranos out for sure. Um, we're also going to take all the lands out for now. Uh, just so we can get a very real estimate of kind of what's in the deck and all that kind of stuff. So we'll we'll see. Ashaya seems kind of fun. Again, it works well in an X deck, which is exactly what we are. Uh, at, at the top end here, we've got quite a number of them. So... I mean, do we live the dream? Uh, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. That's definitely a dream, but it's a pretty fun one. Alternatively, we can just take the mana fixing. I think we just take the mana fixing. Uh, just to be safe, uh, uh, it feels like the right thing to do. 
Um, maybe this? Yeah, I think it's this. That probably actually goes in the deck. Uh, there's the other I'm not sure, but we'll take it. Easy land, sure. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, Sisse does work here. We've got actually quite a number of important creatures. Um, do we just take the fixing? Yeah, probably. Not that we necessarily need it super early, but it does help us with the Hydroid Crisis. Um, yeah, I don't think we're we're taking much of these, um, but that's okay. Muldrotha is really cool, um, but it's not really the kind of deck that we're in. You know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't seem like that's our kind of thing. All right. Let's go into deck building, guys. We obviously have a lot of cuts we're going to need to make here. So let's let's just start. We're getting all the basic lands out of here. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, if you're not a limited player, the general rule of thumb is that you want 23 uh, non-land cards in your deck and then 17 uh, lands of some kind. Now, again, you can flex that a little bit. That doesn't. That's not an absolute, but... It's a good just kind of rule of thumb for you to think about. Depending on your deck, you may want to go a little higher or a little lower on the lands. For us, I think we're going to try and stick to the 17 um, for a variety of reasons, but most importantly because we've got some fixing in the lands, but we actually have X spells at the top end that take advantage of the, the extra mana, so I'd rather make, make sure that we can play those lands. So uh, I think that that's actually okay. Um, Let's see what we can cut here. I love the pool, but I don't think it's that good. <laughs> um, I think we'll keep this so far. Let's again throw these X spells kind of up here just to kind of get an idea of our curve a little bit better. We'll throw this here as well. I don't love this card, so I think we're actually gonna cut that. I think we can keep Vanishing Verse. Oracle seems good, especially with Vizier. Like, between these two, we could just play basically anything from the top of our deck. Not literal anything, um, but definitely a lot. Um, I'm not sold on Gitrog. And Zeatora doesn't seem that great. Uh, Sisse does seem kind of interesting. Um, where are we at? We need to cut two, is what it looks like. So, um, let's see. I do really like most of the cards that we have, I'll be honest. It might be Settle, but I think Settle's like important enough for the deck, if that makes sense, that we probably want to keep it. Uh, Garrick I could see cutting. I don't know that Garrick is like crazy good. Um, probably not. Uh, I also kind of want to minimize Planeswalkers, so the important reason being we have Oracle, we have Vizier. Those allow us between the two to play creatures and lands from the top of our deck, which is great. What that doesn't allow for are Planeswalkers and, of course, artifacts. Now, some of that is okay. We can actually get around some of it with some of the things that we do, but not all of it. So I do... It might just be... Lily? Is it Lily? Lily? It's a sweeper on a Planeswalker, which is, like, super important. Uh, at least it feels important. Maybe that's not correct. I don't know. It could just be Leyline Prowler. Leyline Prowler seems a little underwhelming. Uh, so if we do that, what does our land look like? Our land situation. So definitely that. Definitely that. We actually don't need this now. I think we definitely take that. Um, do we want the Dreamroot Cascade? Oh, excuse me. Definitely these two as well. I guess we'll throw it in there. I'm not super stoked about it, but I think we keep it. Um, and then... So I think we want one island, which will allow us to settle the wilds. I think that's pretty important for us. I think we also will probably need, like, what, one white source maybe? How many other white sources do we have? These can be uh, white. Um, and we've got a bunch of creatures that produce white, so that's probably okay. Uh, 
we'll go with and i'm not sold on i i don't know the the true skew of how this needs to go so um forgive me if some of this seems super incorrect it probably is uh, but we're just we're learning today and i think we go six right yeah i mean we'll try it I, I i'm not sold on it but like it seems pretty good um yeah, I'm kind of into this, guys. Let's uh, let's jump into game one. Let's see how it goes. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Weirdly, I'm actually okay with this hand. Having the curator allows us to kind of ramp a little bit. Now, I know we can only cast creature spells with it, but it does fix our mana quite a bit here, so it's definitely worth doing. Uh, and we, of course, have the beanstalk giant, which can then go fetch up whatever, you know, color mana we need to find there. So let's go ahead and throw this out uh, and see what we can do. Um, very interested to see uh, this that doesn't share a creature card with your library. It's just fascinating to me. I don't, these like alchemy cards are so strange to me because <laughs> I just haven't, you know, played with them obviously before. Uh, and so this is just a, a new experience, we'll say. Um, I think we'll go for the white. That's obviously more impactful, generally speaking, for our deck. Uh, and so I think we can just go ahead and do that. And I will actually punch in for a damage here. Not that... That really does that much, but uh, it does seem useful-ish. Okay. Um, hmm. Interesting. So, how do we want to do this? Uh, let's do this. We can do this for four, which seems pretty good. Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and Hydroid Crisis for four. Gain a little bit of life, get a 4-4 four, four on the field, uh, and, of course, draw a couple cards here. So that's, that actually seems pretty good. Um, doesn't share a creature type with a creature card in your library. Again, I'm still learning such odd cards here. Okay. Uh, sure. So basically what we're trying to do is set up a world where we can utilize Nethroi uh, onto something else here. So we'll, we'll see if we can actually pull that off, but it seems like that would be quite good. Uh, we do have the Timeless Witness as well, so uh, e even if they kill, you know, the Hydroid Crisis, we can actually bring it back with that Timeless Witness, and we're in relatively good shape there. So, uh, Tatiova might need to die this turn uh, with the Voracious Hydra. Uh, how do we feel about that? I think that's probably just the right play. Um... I suppose we'll do it for the max amount, just because we're not doing anything else. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll just tap everything here and do this. That's nice. We did get to draw a card there. Um, we'll fight off the Tatiova. Uh, th this just gains so much value over the course of a game that I really don't want to have that on the field if we can help it. So. I'm very happy that we got the Voracious Hydra here. We drew the card off of it. So now we actually can start using Turgrid to get some cards potentially out of hand here. Um, obviously that doesn't mean uh, we're gonna get everything, but it does help quite a bit. Parallel lives, huh? Fascinating. We can just be in Stock Giant as well, uh, which is a perfectly reasonable play, I would argue. Um, First things first, I'm just going to swing in with the team. I don't think there's a reason to overthink that. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the lantern out. And I will go ahead and throw this at them just to see what they do. Uh, Peril, or Feed the Swarm is a sorcery. So it, it's worth noting that we may need to just go ahead and kill the parallel lives. Um, I don't know, though. I'll be honest, I'm not sold on that. I'm gonna do this, uh, we'll just say white, just to have the option, and we'll pass. Um, yeah, we'll see. This seems interesting enough. Like, they have to do something pretty big here to be able to stay in the game. Certainly they've got options, but like, we do just have flyers and things that can kind of get around it. Uh, this is only gonna be for four, which is 
I think okay. Like I think we can manage. Um, what? Let's let's see what they do. I mean, this is their turn. Like they they have spent all of their mana here. So a, a four drop is scary because it could be anything. At the same time, it is just a four drop. So Uro is cool. It doesn't seem that good though. Um, yeah, that was perfectly fine. And there we go, we got a win. That was great guys. That was kind of exactly how we drew it up. We kind of just want to do more of that. So let's uh, let's keep going. All right guys, here we are for our next game. And wow, what a, what a great hand actually. Um, this is kind of exactly what we want in the opener. This allows us to get a turn two tireless provisioner down, which will help us get to a turn three oracle of multi so yeah this is this is great <laughs> let's just get more of this um yeah i i couldn't be happier with this start actually this is phenomenal uh let's go ahead and play the tireless provisioner again this gains so much value for every land that we throw down uh and so there's really no reason not to to go for it here this also allows us to give this a go this upcoming turn and still get more stuff down so um, we will go for black because obviously I think that just makes the most sense. We do need more black than anything else. Um, and here, I think we'll actually go for Oracle. Um, there's a reason why I, I kind of want to see if we can, or excuse me, with the Menagerie, I kind of want to see if we can draw some extra cards off of some things here. So I'm being a bit greedy in doing it in this order, <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll see if it works out for us. Um, Mentor of the Meek, a great card. This literally does nothing. I can just block with the the curator, uh, which is fine by me. And yeah, they get a creature back, but they actually can't do too much. I mean, really cool, but it doesn't actually do anything. Um, all right, so let's do this. We will, I think just keep ramping. We'll go for the Oracle. Uh, yeah, we can play the land off the top. That's really good. Uh, let's do this. I mean, this is exactly what you want. Um, I think we'll go here. Yeah, we'll just auto pay here. Um, it's not amazing by any means, but it does allow us to kind of get stuff going here. I mean, look at our board in comparison to theirs. You know what I mean? I will actually go ahead and throw this out too. I know we're kind of burning through our treasure here quite a bit, but uh, this is actually really interesting. So what we can do, this untaps a permanent. Uh, so we can actually use it to untap the Reckoner Bank Buster if we so choose. Um, and we, I mean, look at our mana in comparison to what they are doing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, this is fine. Uh, do we crew this is the question. I'll go for it. I I'll bite. If they have a kill spell, they have a kill spell. Um, but I think this is okay. I'd like to make sure we keep Kiora around. Uh, and while two damage is certainly not going to kill Kiora, um, I think this is okay. Okay, sure. You got it. Um, we still just block here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I mean, they're going to be able to do this, but basically we kept them from, oh no, we didn't. It's only one, isn't it? Oops, it is only one. All right, let's play land. Shieldred is very good. Uh, let's create a treasure. Uh, we can't quite play Shieldred yet, but that's really solid. So, um, I think we'll just pass here. Next turn, we get to drop Shieldred. They're going to have to sacrifice some stuff. Uh, and we actually can start bringing stuff back, depending on what it is. The Provisioner, man, doing so much work this game. Um, and they're on a, a little... I mean, it's a very cool deck. you got to admit, it's a very... Um, uh, what's the word? Oh, I can't think of it. It's a very cool deck. It's a very sacrificial style deck, which is very awesome. But uh, it's obviously not going to... Like, I don't know where the power level is here. So we actually get to draw two cards here, which is really cool. Um, 
Do we take another stab with this to get a basic land? Yeah, I think we can. Let's just go ahead and throw this out. Um, this shuffles our deck as well. So what we're actually able to do, I do want to get the blue just to give us that option. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I think we just pass. Shieldred's going to trigger. They're going to have to sacrifice a creature here, which does, for the record, drain a life. Uh, but it's not necessarily great for them. I mean, they literally like have to deal with Shieldred. This does have Swamp Walk as well, so it's literally unblockable. Ironic that they're going to take a Turgrid with the Brain Maggot. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, sure. Very nice. Um, it just doesn't seem like they're playing any big stuff, though. I mean, it seems like that's kind of what this cube is about, but it doesn't seem like they're doing a lot of it. Maybe they just have a ton of removal? That's certainly a possibility. Uh, but it seems like they went for a relatively fair kind of deck. Sure. Um, so... Do any of your upkeep return target creature? Alright, well, we don't have one to return quite yet, which is fine. All right, let's throw a land down. Yeah, that's a really interesting card. Um, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> a nice 15-15, that seems pretty good. Um, <laughs> okay, let's throw a land down. Uh, the combo potential is pretty awesome here, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, with toughness X or less. Do we want to kill some stuff? Kind of, right? So we can just do this for two. Yeah, I mean, one, two, three, because I kind of want Turgor back. Um, that gets rid of their engine stuff as well, which is pretty important. Um, sure, they ping us for a little here, but I don't really care about that. Um, let's see. Do we want to... I mean, we do... We have the land potential here, which is kind of the cool part. I guess we could have... No, we couldn't have. That would have been really sick, but we could not have. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this. Wait, 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 wait. Nah, I'll, I'll do this. That's fine. Just auto pay. That's cool. Um... Go ahead and lantern them again now we have multiple outlets to to actually get rid of stuff here so this is pretty awesome uh i will do this let's actually go here let's hit them with it again Uh, we can actually hit him with it more because we have Kiora. <laughs> so they did discard. Okay, let's move to attacks. Uh, they can't block Shieldred. This is a free freebie here. Um, let's go ahead and untap the lantern. Let's go ahead and do this again. <laughs> I love this deck. <laughs> this is really fun. Um, okay, so now they have to sacrifice a creature. Again, keeping in mind, guys, they could very easily have, like, a million really good things here. The trick is, though, um, we still have a Beanstalk Giant, and now we actually just have a Seek the Wilds that can refill our hand as well. So, like, we've, we've got some good stuff. Uh, Kaya is very good. Kaya is very, very good. Uh, but they're gonna have to make a pretty big decision here, Shieldred or Ashaya. Both of which are, like, pretty game-ending style cards. Um, and there we go. We got the win. Fantastic, guys. Two and two for two with this deck. Uh, I'm really loving this format, guys. I'll be honest. Uh, let's keep it going. All right, guys. Here we are for our next game. Uh, this is a bit of an unexciting hand. However, um, we'll try it. I I'm not positive that this is actually a good keep at all, but we do have Settle the Wilds, which can help replenish our hand a little bit. We've got the, vi or the Provisioner, which we know to be very good. Uh, and so really, 
you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, that last deck, by the way, just felt like a very fair deck. Uh, and I don't think that's really what this format's about. Um, I, I think this format's really about doing some ridiculous stuff, which, I mean, hey, <laughs> we're kind of doing it. Um... Let's do this. I kind of want to hit a turn four thing. Oracle and Vizier. I mean, that's pretty good. Obviously, it would have been better to have the Provisioner down at that point, but ramping this early in the game allows us to potentially do some really broken stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to Ashaya. I normally would kind of try and build a little bit here, but... Okay, uh, Horn Swoggle, sure, <laughs> whatever, you got me. Uh, again, the good news about our deck is we built in so much recursion with Timeless Witness as well as, you know, Liliana alone, uh, and so we kind of just have options. We'll see what they do, but uh, I, I do kind of want to stick a Oracle or a Vizier, or maybe even just a Provisioner, we'll see. I'd love to get some instantaneous value off of the Provisioner by playing it, playing a land. That'll give us, what, six mana, and then we can, you know, run something else out like a Kiora. Oh, hey, me too. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to decline. I'm just going to take three. Not stressed about it. We're just going to take three. It's early in the game. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and drop that. Let's Oracle, because if we can get another land here, that'd be pretty sick. Uh, we did not, but that's okay. All right, um, so the engine is trying to get there. We'll see if it actually sticks. My assumption is this is going to be a pretty heavy removal style deck, given that it so far has been Grixis, so... Uh, we're going to decline. We're going to take three. If they want to just go for it again, that's fine. Uh, curious what's in their hand that they're debating on here, though. We have to sacrifice a creature. Uh, yeah. I mean, that sucks. I think it's Oracle. As much as I don't love that, I think it's Oracle. Um, they're probably going to kill the Provisioner. I feel like Innocent Blood is not generally that good in this format. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, not sure about that. So they can just go ahead and kill the Provisioner as well? Sure. I mean, that sucks, but what are you going to do, you know? Uh, yeah, let's just play the Menagerie. Go ahead and play this. Uh, and that's it. Cast creature spells, or man of any type to cast creature spells. See, that's where I feel like the Vizier is so good, is that you can spend mana as though or man of any type to cast creature spells. We really need another black card here, which we actually have, but... Um, I'm going to decline one more time. Not super sold that that's the right call, I'll be honest, but we're going to try. Oh no, they're going to get our... Man, we had Liliana coming down next turn with an Ashaya in the graveyard. Like, that would have been really sick. Uh, now we can't guarantee that since they get to steal the land. Oh, no. Not a tapped land. That's not what you want. All right, well. Um, black. Definitely black. Uh, this does have Death Touch, which is, like, semi-annoying. What do we do? I think I'm willing to, to drop this. I'm not certain. Oh, I didn't even... Well, oh, that was my bad. Sure. Uh, Gonti was going to be a problem, I think, regardless. So that might have been just a bad attack. We probably lose this game because of their like heavy, heavy removal package, which is perfectly reasonable. Like I'm certainly okay with losing a game where they just have a lot of what yeah um how'd that happen again is this is this a thing that they copied i missed it oh they stole our turgrid oh that's not ideal um i'm gonna sacrifice the elves they get it that's fine i don't care yeah that was not that was not good 
I think we're definitely in the uh, the losing position at this point, uh, which is fine. Guys, I hope everybody is okay with us doing... I, I know one person mentioned on the last uh, Thursday video, which was a, a longer video, of course, that, um, you know, sometimes they enjoy the content. A lot of the times it's nice because the content isn't above, you know, 20, 30 minutes and that kind of thing. And certainly we, for, for the majority of our videos, we keep it that, that length. I'm going to go ahead and good game them here. Um, but I, was, I hope that this is okay for you guys. I know it's something different, it's something new. Uh, but it's just fun to explore. So let's jump into the next game, guys. All right, everybody. Here we are for our next game. The ramp is so real. Uh, I will actually keep it, though. We definitely want some action, but, like, this is a super rampy hand, which just means any of the stuff that we draw we're going to be able to play. So seems reasonable enough to me. Uh, we're obviously not going to play a Voracious Hydra for zero. That seems bad. Um, cool. Cool. Let's do this. Uh, do we go ahead and seek? Yeah, I think we do. We'll go ahead and seek. And we get Oracle. Okay, cool. This just guarantees that we're able to do more this upcoming turn. So, uh, I mean, I think that that's pretty clear. Uh, don't love seeing blue, to be honest. Um, let's do this, see what happens. Do they counter? I'm sure they've got a counter. Double blue, I mean, come on. It's gotta be. And that card professionally gains mana over man of any color. Okay, so they just get a copy of it, I see. Oh. I mean, all of these seem pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Demonic Tutor, I think is the call. Yeah, I think it's Demonic Tutor. Let's... Oh, we have to discard a card, right? Um, I think it's the Witness, because we can just play the Witness any at any time, really. Demonic Tutor seems great. Heck yes. All right, cool. So they're going to get kind of the same effect, obviously, uh, which is not ideal, but that's fine. And they do have a creature on board, which is less ideal, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana available. Two of it can go away, and we've got five left. Alternatively, we can do this. So we do this, which would end that. Um, yeah, let's just keep ramping, actually. <laughs> um, I'm kind of okay with that, I think. So we can do this for three, which would be enough to kill this futurist. Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna do this. Um, the only reason I'm gonna pull this trigger now uh, is because we can't really keep taking three from this and still remain in a commanding position, but...